So I'm making this meditation uh, a letter, an open letter to our, to our young people, but not just ours, but those in the wider community. So it's a letter, dear young people, as a pastor, I feel the need to directly communicate to you what's on my heart. I often think of my growing up years. Those years weren't always easy. I didn't always like them. I lived with fear and angst, like so many kids growing up in the nuclear age. But knowing that all of you face so much more makes my heart ache. I know you deal with, with so much. Wars around the world, mass shootings at schools, vicious, divisive politics that seem to get worse by the day, a planet in peril, Social media that gives you escape, but also sometimes harms your psyche. So much more. And add in all the other stuff, the stuff I dealt with growing up, and the difficulty and the complexity for you is, as you might say, next level. And we wonder why anxiety is such a reality for you on the daily. I personally feel the need to apologize to you. Uh, it's not really possible for me to represent everyone in the world, but I can apologize personally, myself. We, your elders, your leaders, your pastors, your culture have dropped the ball, and sadly, you suffer the consequences. So I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry that you have to face so much, too much, too soon. But I don't want to stop there. I want to share some good news. I feel the need to share it with you because there are so many mixed messages out there. And I know the internet, YouTube influencers, social media are all things, real things. If information is everywhere. But the good news I want to share too often gets lost in the mess. So I begin with the good news, and with this wonderful Mr. Rogers quote. You may not know who Mr. Rogers is. Google him. He's a beautiful human being who did so much good in our world. We miss him. He said this, I believe that at the center of the universe there dwells a, a, a loving spirit which longs for all that's best in all of creation. A spirit who knows the great potential of each planet as well as each person. And little by little will love us into being more than we ever dreamed possible. That loving spirit would rather die than give up on any one of us. A loving spirit. We miss that. We miss the preaching of that simple truth, a loving spirit. Not only that, we miss this essential truth, which I shared with our children, to be, to simply exist in this world means to be loved, to be loved by a loving spirit that would rather die than to see any of us 
suffer needlessly. So you don't have to do anything to earn God's love, but simply exist. Just be. You don't need a grade. You don't need a degree. You don't need to look or be a certain way. You don't have to reach a level of respect, admiration, or popularity. We don't have to have a lot of friends and likes on social media. To be of this world means to be loved unconditionally by a loving spirit who breathed into this universe love and life and who'd rather die than to see any of us suffer. We are God's beloved no matter what. As for who God is, this is where it gets even better. This is the good news. God is love. God is love. And so we are loved by love itself. <laughs> we are created by love, for love, to love. Our built-in capacity to love comes straight from the heart of God. Now I probably can guess what you're thinking, oh young friends. <laughs> then why all the hate? <laughs> why all the anger? Why the vicious and ugly politics? Why all the chaos? Why all the violence, the threats of violence, the fear of violence? Why the mess we've made? Why the mass shootings we ignore? Why the wars we wage? Why the meanness, callousness, and lack of compassion? Why all the bad news? Well, the simple answer is one that may be hard to hear for you because mostly because no one ever talks about it anymore. Well, our society, our culture have forgotten and walked away from the good news that I just shared with you. Our culture has forgotten and walked away from the truth that each of us is God's beloved one. When we look at each other, we see God loving them as they are. We've forgotten and walked away from the truth that God's love for us is built in. No one earns it. No one has, has to be, look, become something, or be from a certain place. To exist in this world means to be loved by the loving spirit that created and, in, and inhabits our world. Forgetting this, walking away from this, we do at our own peril. We've forgotten and walked away from the truth that each of us is equally created in the image of God, each endowed with the spark of God within us, each dignified as God's children. And we've walked away and forgotten the truth that God is love. We've complicated things beyond measure when we can't see the truth right in front of us, that God is love. The church calls this forgetting and this walking away from God and the good. The church, our tradition, calls it sin. And we as a society must walk away from sin. We as a society cannot forget or walk away from the love of God any longer because sin, this kind of sin, kills. And it's killing our spirit and more. Fortunately, this, this is a, going back to that good news, turning things around 
is not beyond us. Oh, young friend, our forgetting, our forgetting and walking away is not the end of the story. Redemption, turning things around, is right in front of us for us to grab and make our own. How? Why? Love has created a bridge back. There is always a bridge back. Love creates it. Love has not left us hanging. Christ, yes, I will be, be specific. Christ is the bridge back to remembering and to returning to the way of love. Christ, the loving one, the, the one who was hung on a cross by human ignorance, hatred, and anger, Christ cuts the rope for us, loosens our noose, frees us, freeing us to remember and to walk toward God. Let me end by saying this. Many of your generation have in, have in turn done your own walking away, namely from the church. Understandably, I would say. You've walked away from our poor example of walking Jesus' way. You've walked away from our sold out Faith used and abused by the powerful and those seeking power. You've walked away from our spaces that condone political and religious leaders who join hands and worship the God of power and wealth. So I get it. I've been there. I've walked away from this once in my life. But I have, have faith you'll eventually turn back and arrive at Jesus, the one who has been lost in all the ugliness and chaos. I have faith you'll arrive at Jesus. Stay there and learn and live his way of love and then exemplify it for us. You will lead the revival of a new yet ancient way of living the faith. You, our young ones, will be the key to our salvation as a culture. I believe that. How? You will remind us of what we've forgotten and walked away from. You'll remind us of the essential truths of the faith that we are loved by a God who is love. You'll re remind us of why we're here. The child shall lead us. I realize you're no longer young children, but you're closer to childhood than any of us old fogies, mm -hmm. and you'll soon be leading us home. So lead onward and know we love you.